Hey, welcome to Out and About with Next Pittsburgh. I'm Boaz Franco. We've got John behind the camera, and we're here at the Pittsburgh Zoo and PPG Aquarium to chat with their new director and uh, CEO, Jeremy Goodman. He's right inside here, the aquarium, so come follow me. And I've got a lot of questions about animals and zoos, and I can't get in right now. Gosh, okay, okay, here we are. We're coming in. It's a good thing we know the, the director of the zoo. Hey, <laughs> Dr. Goodman, how's it going today? It's going great. How are you? Doing well. So you've been here. Let's walk over here so we can see some of this beautiful stuff. You've been here for one and a half months on the job as president and CEO. Do any of the animals recognize you yet? Uh, I don't think so. Not, not yet. <laughs> I'm still learning all their names. They're still learning mine. <laughs> You've worked at so many other zoos as well, and so what interested you in Pittsburgh? Well, Pittsburgh Zoo has a great reputation. Um, it's definitely ranked very high amongst uh, zoos nationally. The fact that they have a, we have an incredible aquarium uh, that we're in right now is, is really special, and just the conservation work. So I, I think it's it's a, it was a multiple factors, a great community, great you know that that we're really starting to enjoy. So uh, it, it was a good fit for me. And is there anything about Pittsburgh specifically? Were you a big Steelers fan? <laughs> Giants fan, but I'll root for the Steelers. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, it was, it, it's just got a really nice community, and uh, everybody's very warm and friendly, and, and it, was, it was a good fit for my family. Yeah, that's awesome. And you mentioned some of the conservation elements, which is, of course, like in recent years, that's become a big part of, of zoos is, is the conservation. It is, because that, that's a, the main reason for our existence, is to really teach people about uh, the animals so that hopefully they'll, they'll join us in conserving uh, you know, the wild animals and wild places. So uh, it, it is a huge thing of, that we do here, and it's something that we hope to expand further. We have a thousand acres out uh, about an hour and a half from here that we're really hoping to develop um, into a, a, a large conservation center. And also you have this turtle project you've been working on. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the things that we do actually is we rescue um, wild sea turtles. Uh, you might remember that uh, last winter about 10,000 sea turtles were stranded and cold stunned in Texas, and it was zoos and aquariums that came to the rescue. So uh, hopefully we won't see those kind of numbers again, but um, every year we help, help uh, you know, dozens of sea turtles uh, recuperate, and, and we're able to return them back into the wild. There is, like there's a rescued sea turtle right behind us, right? Yeah, yeah. you want to check them out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, this particular turtle was uh, unfortunately not able to be released. Uh, has a buoyancy issue uh, where his back end just keeps floating up. Uh, so if we can get a good look at him, you'll, you'll see that unfortunately just he didn't have the um, stability to um, go back into the wild. So we gave him a, a, a forever home here at the Pittsburgh Zoo and Aquarium. And now we have John playing a game of Where's Waldo right here to try to find that turtle. Yeah, sometimes uh, um, just likes to hide in some crevices, but, um, you know, definitely one of the, the fan favorites here from, from our visitors at the zoo. They, they love seeing the sea turtles. Any luck, John? Did you find the sea turtle? Okay, we'll, we'll look for it for the next few minutes. And you started as a veterinarian. Yeah, uh, I got my degree uh, in animal science from Rutgers University and then a uh, veterinary uh, doctorate at Tufts. And um, I did some uh, private practice and then uh, got into zoo veterinary medicine and then uh, made the transition over to, uh, to administration. And so when you're walking around the zoo, are you ever like, ooh, I think that cheetah has a goiter? Yeah, uh, not a specifically a goiter, but uh, it's kind of hard not to notice things uh, if, if you know, uh, one of the eyes is off in one of the fish, a little swollen, a little limp, a little. Um, as a veterinarian, you definitely pick up on those things instantly. And do you still, like, get in there? Like, are you, you know, going into surgery with animals, putting the gloves on? No, no. We, we've got a, a team of uh, very qualified veterinarians. I'm always willing to help if they need it, but um, I've got my hands full of uh, uh, the CEO president position, so uh, definitely... Um, don't need to be doing veterinary stuff, but always willing to help and uh, uh, lend my expertise if they, they, they need it. I'm imagining it's sort of like, you know, one of the movies where we're like, come on, one last he heist, you know, this chimp needs a new heart and I'm the only one who can do it. <laughs> no, it's not like that, but having done it for a long time, uh, I have quite a bit of experience and always willing to share my knowledge uh, with our vets if they, if they need it. Yeah. And so you must, you know, I know you've only been here a month and a half, but you must, you know, have some hopes and dreams and, and 
visions of the future? Like, what do you hope the zoo and aquarium look like in 10 years? Yeah, um, so we're going to be doing strategic planning and master planning coming up shortly, and that process is going to be a very inclusive process. It's not just going to be the staff and our board, uh, but it'll also include uh, the public at large as well, because I... You know, this is not my zoo. This is really Pittsburgh Zoo, and uh, I want to hear what the people of Western Pennsylvania want with their zoo. So um, there isn't a, a secret sauce or formula for what makes a great zoo. It's really trying to tailor it to the community and to uh, um, the physical facilities and the skill of our employees. So, um, you know, I, all I can say is that it'll, it'll really involve a lot of great animal welfare, as well as great customer service. And there'll be a lot of other things. I can't say which new animals, but... Um, is that just because you don't know or because it's a secret and you won't tell us? No, it's because I honestly don't know yet. Um, but all I can say is that the anim all the animals that we house here will be housed under the highest of welfare standards. And it's something that we are committed to, to doing and just making sure that uh, any animal that's in our care is taken care of very well. Well, let's take a walk up this ramp over here. and. Just jumping off what you were just saying is a number of years ago, the Pittsburgh Zoo um, stopped being a member of the AZA, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. And I know that's one of your projects is to re get re-accredited. And so why is that important? So there's lots of different uh, accrediting uh, bodies. Uh, the USDA, for example, accredits all zoos. Uh, or they, they certify all zoos. So the USDA does? The USDA does, believe it or not. So They're proving like our beef and our zoos. Yes. Uh, so they, they, um, they license over 2,000 zoos in this country, believe it or not. Um, the definition of zoo is a little bit wide open for, for the USDA. If, if you exhibit any animals, uh, specifically mammals, uh, then you can fall into the zoo category. But there's only about, out of those 2,000 zoos, there's only about 200 that meet the, the really high standards of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. So, you know, here in Pittsburgh, we want to be the best. Um, and part of being the best is holding ourselves to the highest standards. City of champions, after all. You, you got it. So uh, the zoo is definitely going to be one of those. And uh, right now we're accredited by the ZAA, Zoological Association of America, which we intend on keeping as well. Uh, we're certified by American Humane. They're the same uh, organization that certifies no animals were harmed in this this uh, in this film. So they, they have a separate certification for zoos. So we are going to be certified by as many organizations as we can to just you know, show everybody that we are committed to excellence and that we hold ourselves to the highest standards. You clearly care so much about, you know, the welfare of these animals. So, I, you know, I'm just curious, like, did you hate watch the show Tiger King? I couldn't, couldn't bring myself to watching it, yeah. quite honestly. It's, uh, unfortunately, it's people like that that really give zoos a bad name. And, uh, you know, zoo critics like to, to point to that as the norm, but uh, quite honestly, uh, most zoos, or at least certainly accredited zoos, are, are quality institutions like ourselves that, that take great care of our animals and are committed to our animals, um, not just a, you know, a quick buck here and there. Yeah. Well, let's text John's dexterity and see if he can continue going up this ramp backwards. This is sort of the game show portion of, the portion of it. Um, and there's a lot happening at the zoo. I think a lot of people think like, oh, it's a nice summer day, let's go to the zoo. But honestly, if it's like a crummy, cold, and wet day, it's also a good day to go to the zoo. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tropical feel here in the aquarium all, all the time. And it's just a great place to come in the fall or the winter uh, to warm up. Uh, plus, also, even if you're outside, uh, a lot of our animals are more active. Our, our Amur tigers uh, love the snow, our polar bears, so uh, red pandas. So there's a lot of animals that, are, are, that might be sleeping in the summer just in the heat of the day, but are very, very active in the winter. So great time to come out and check, check out the zoo. Um, and do you have like a favorite part of the of the Pittsburgh Zoo yourself? Um, I'm still learning the facility, but I think one of the things that I really enjoy is the layout. Uh, when you come out from under the bridge uh, in the Asian and African sections, just how it's very serpentine and all the buildings are hidden and um, it's very immersive. And I, I really like like that feel. It's a, it was a very very good design, um, you know, when it was initially laid out. And I know you've got zoo lights coming up, so when does that get started? So that starts uh, the Friday after Thanksgiving, and we're really excited to bring that back. Uh, we brought it back last year during COVID as a drive-through, and uh, we're going to do it as a drive-through again this year. Um, so 
get your tickets early because um, they very well could sell out again. Um, but it's just a great way to spend the holidays with your friends, with your family. Come out, enjoy the park. You probably won't see too many animals because it's going to be pitch black out. But um, you know, you'll see all sorts of animals in lights of all colors. And it's just a great, safe way to spend the holidays. And we're really hoping it becomes a tradition for everybody yearly to, to come out here and, and, and enjoy it. Yeah, well, it's certainly fun. You know how to put on a fun event. I know people were pumped about the Asian Lantern Festival. Yeah, that was a, a, a great, great um, festival, and we were so happy to bring it. And hopefully, uh, we plan on bringing it back next year with all different types of lanterns. So, and that was our first um, really dive into a, a, a cultural event. Uh, usually, our events are kind of focused around animals and whatnot. And granted, um, we had all the animal lanterns out, so there was a, a connection, but uh, it was definitely something that I think the community really embraced, and uh, once again, looking forward to uh, an even better show next year. We're standing in front of the sharks right now, or there's a bunch of sharks coming by. Is there an animal that scares you? Is there an animal that scares me? I, you know, I think you have to treat all animals with respect, um, and if you do that, uh, and you're you're properly cautious, then there's really nothing to be scared about. Um, you know, there's some animals that we're more cautious than <laughs> with others. Uh, some of our venomous animals and some of our our dangerous carnivores. But um, you know, I think if if you know what you're doing and have that healthy respect for the animals and and know the proper distance to stay, and um, then you know, especially from our visitors. As long as everyone stays on the right side of the barrier, uh, there's really nothing to worry about. Awesome. Well, let's just stand over here so we can take in this beautiful waterfall. And um, are you up for this lightning round? A quick few quick questions, and you get some quick, uh, some quick answers? Okay, let's do it. Okay. Number one, what animal not currently at the zoo do you wish you did have at the zoo? A mola mola. Oh, gosh. Well, I, well I, now I just have to ask what that is. <laughs> It's the giant ocean sunfish. We don't have room for it here, but they are so cool. That's amazing. Okay, do you call it pop or soda? Soda. Uh, do you have any pets at home? Yes, I do. A bird. Oh. Uh, do you have a favorite Pittsburgh neighborhood yet? Uh, so far, I'm liking Squirrel Hill. Nice. What animal here at the zoo would you like to be able to have a conversation with? Oh, they'd all be so interesting. I, I don't have a specific animal. I'd love to talk to them all because I bet you they have stories to tell. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, you're, do you have a favorite Pittsburgh museum? Um, so for the only museum that I've been to, I hate to say, is uh, the Heinz Center, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the director there is amazing and uh, showed me around, and uh, it's an incredible facility, and hopefully I'll be uh, touring the others soon. And lastly, which zoo animal's diet is most appealing to you? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I would say right now... It's probably some of our tortoises that are eating the salads just because uh, uh, on a little diet now and uh, salads is what it's about. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us. You can find Dr. Jeremy Goodman here at the zoo, and we'll see you next time on Out and About.